So what we're going to do now is we're going to take our circuit that we made last time, this RL circuit, and we're going to add a capacitor to the system. And we're going to start off by breaking our circuit and just putting this capacitor in series with everything else. So now we're measuring across both the capacitor and the inductor, which means that what we're looking at here is an RLC circuit that is acting as a band stop. So what we expect to see is we're going to start at a low frequency at a relatively high V out. Then as we increase the frequency, that V out is going to decrease and then increase again. Let's take a look at how that actually works out. So we're starting off here at 35 kilohertz, and I'm just going to slowly increase that frequency. And you can see that as we increase the frequency, it decreases up to about 50 kilohertz, and then past 50 kilohertz, it starts increasing again. Now, if this were an ideal filter, an ideal RLC circuit, then we would see that right at this 50 kilohertz range, our amplitude of our green curve here would go to zero. But in reality, that's not what's happening. We're getting something that's quite a bit larger. So that comes from this being not ideal. We can make this a little more ideal by increasing the size of our capacitor. The capacitor we chose was a one nanofarad, which is a little bit small. Um, so I'm gonna increase that to a one microfarad capacitor. So we have to change our frequency by a lot in order to get to our minimum now. So our minimum frequency is somewhere in the 1.5 kilohertz range. And you can see that our minimum is now down at the 11 millivolts range rather than about the 40 millivolts that was before. So that's just a product of having a higher quality capacitor, uh, having a few less of the inefficiencies that we would get there. 